So now you're more matter and less energy, more particle and less wave. And in fact, the hormones of stress cause you to narrow your focus on objects and things and people because that's where the danger is. When the hormones of stress kick in and your brain waves go into high beta and you're aroused, you're going to pay attention to your outer world and you're no longer going to want to believe in your inner world of possibility. Are you with me still? And if the survival gene is switched on, you won't want to go in, close your eyes and create because it's not a time to create. It's not a time to focus on the unknown. It's a time to prepare yourself for what could be lurking behind those corners. It's not a time to learn. It's not a time to open your heart. It's not a time to be vulnerable. It's not a time to sit still. It's a time to run, to fight, or to hide. And people spend the majority of their life living by these hormones. And those hormones cause us to become materialists using our senses to define reality. And if you can't see it, you can't hear it, you can't smell it, you can't taste it, you can't feel it, it doesn't exist. And all of a sudden, people all of a sudden give up possibility. And now, when they're more matter than energy, they will try to force outcomes, control outcomes, predict outcomes, fight for outcomes, because they are matter trying to change matter. Are you with me still? And as people begin to try to control and predict all the different things in their life when they're aroused by these chemicals, each person, each object, each thing, each place, each experience has a neurological network in their brain because they've experienced them already, yes or no? And as they shift their attention from one person to one problem or one thing, they start activating these different circuits over and over again. And all of a sudden, if you measure that in the brain, the brain gets highly incoherent. It's a house divided against itself. When your brain is incoherent, you're incoherent. And when your brain isn't working right, you're not working right. And at the exact same time, when this vital energy is being drawn and turned into chemistry, the heart, the center of oneness, the center of wholeness, your first step to divinity right here, the bridge, your connection to the unified field, it loses its energy and all of a sudden it starts to beat very incoherently. The emotions of resentment and impatience, and hatred and violence cause the heart all of a sudden to no longer be in balance. And all of a sudden we no longer trust our heart. What we want to do is protect ourselves from everyone and everything in our life and we no longer trust. And if you can't trust in the unknown, then it doesn't exist. And people understand and they're living by the hormones of stress unconsciously to run from the unknown. Because the unknown you can't predict and it's being in that state of the unknown, not being able to predict your future, that actually creates the stress response. So nobody takes a chance in possibility and everybody's waiting for everybody to do it. Are you with me still? When you narrow your focus on matter and on objects and things and people, you're focusing on the particle in quantum physics and you're eliminating the wave of possibility. And where you place your attention is where you place your energy. If all of your attention is on matter and energy doesn't exist from you and you will feel separate from the field, you will live in lack and you will say, I feel empty and I need that thing to make me feel better. And once I get that thing, I'm going to experience the emotion of it. And when I get it, then it's going to make me feel better. But when the novelty wears off, here comes the emptiness again. So then you say, I'm in lack again. I need one of those. So then you got to go to work and you got to drag your body through space. And when you drag your body through space, you experience time. So then you got to go back and forth to work to make the money to pay for the thing that's going to fulfill some lack but it never does. Are you with me still? And people then all of a sudden after 30 years, they have their car, they have their house, they have the relationship and they're too exhausted to enjoy it. Are you with me still? And that's called normal. <laughs> but would you agree with me then? If you're waking up in the morning, come on, stay with me. 
<clears throat> if you're waking up in the morning and you're not being defined by some vision of the future and your biology is in your past and you get up and start your day, when you see the same people and you go to the same places and you do the exact same thing and you see the same object in your life, it's your environment that's influencing how you think and feel, yes or no? And you will be thinking and feeling in the past because your biology is in the past, yes or no? Come on. So if you see the same people and you go to the same places and you do the exact same thing at the exact same time, you would have to agree with me then that your personality is no longer creating your personality. We are so conditioned into believing how powerless we are. It's just not even a thought. We just don't think we can. Our thoughts do nothing. That's what most people think. But when people start to realize that they do have an effect, and that when you get a group of people that can elevate their energy, they can open their hearts, and they understand that the body and the heart begin to produce a magnetic field, and that field can influence other people if there's an, a thought or an intent laid on that. We've done the measurements to prove that. Then you, you start to realize that when you get enough people doing that, that it affects people's autonomic nervous system. In other words, when you do it, and you send the thought that everybody in the room, that their lives be enriched, their bodies be healed, that the dreams come true, that the mystical find them, and they're wearing heart rate monitors, and you see those people go into heart coherence <laughs> at the exact same time, at the exact same day, in the exact same meditation, you realize that we're bound by this invisible field of energy. And, and so, because of that, you know, we've done some global coherence uh, meditations. We had 46,000 people uh, on our last one, which is a pretty good statistic. Uh, but here's my thought, and the HeartMath Institute has their, project, their Global Coherence Project as well, and we want to do something where we do it all together, right? And I think we will in the next year or so. But the thing is, is that if you look at the peace gathering projects uh, that have taken place in the last uh, 40 years or so, yeah, there's crime rates that go down, violence goes down, economic growth goes up, and there's a strong correlation between the sun's activity and, and a lot of these things. But when the projects were over, you know, crime returned back to their normal, to its normal value, and, and uh, uh, violence and car accidents randomly started increasing again. So it's not enough to just think it and, and to focus on it or feel it. We have, to, we have to live that prayer. <laughs> we have to demonstrate it. The prayer goes on. You have to be eyes open now in that energy. And then if you're forgiving, if you're not cheating your neighbor, if you're not manipulating outcomes, if you're not reacting violently to certain situations or judging other people because you're self-regulating, then other people around you that observe you will start doing the same. So. The problem is a lot of people do that and then they go unconscious and they're cutting people off as they drive out of the... Peace be with you at church. Shake your hands. Peace be with you. Get in your car and cut people off as you're trying to get out of the... as you're trying to get out of the parking lot. Like, that can't be there. I mean, you can't want peace and be arguing with your relative or your co-worker. you got to take care of that. So, the model has to be in the realm of demonstration too because if you keep demonstrating it, You'll go from thinking to doing to being. And when you're in that state of being, then all of a sudden you've got a community of people that now have memorized an internal state that's greater than any condition in their outer environment. And that's when the environment begins to respond. So I do think it's possible, but given the amount of time information travels around the world with whatever crisis we're in, that does affect people, you know. So... We have to be the demonstration of it. And as all these paradigms begin to fall apart, I mean, whether it's politics or economics or the environment or education or religion or the medical model, whatever is collapsing, they're all collapsing. Journalism, it's all, it's all falling apart because something greater has to happen. And, and information uh, creates awareness. Awareness is consciousness, so there's a, consciousness is energy, so you, you have a change in energy. So any system that's no longer uh, it, consistent with that change in energy is going to unravel. 
but that that chaos is that, that is just unpredictable order something greater is going to reorganize as long as you and i are not living in fear and hostility and anger and suffering we have to rise above that yeah, then when we do um, we help to create that reorganization.